But no one benefited long term from FTX's collapse or will benefit more than government regulators. They are pointing to FTX and demanding more control over cryptocurrency and ultimately the end of the cash economy. Why do we think they're going to do that? Because they're already working on it. SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce said this week that the demise of XTS could be a, quote, catalyst for more regulation. So why should you worry about that? Well, because as we saw in Canada last year, crypto is a huge problem for governments. Governments can't control, ideally, cryptocurrency. You can't freeze someone's personal cold wallet with crypto in it if you don't like what they say. So what does this have to do with the collapse of FTX? Well, it turns out that Sam Bankman-Fried's girlfriend, Caroline Ellison, has a lot of connections to regulators. In fact, the biggest regulator of all in this country. Her father, Glenn, is an MIT professor who worked at that university alongside, drumroll please, Gary Gensler, the head of the SEC, which is in charge of cryptocurrency regulation. FTX's general counsel used to work with Gensler on the Commodities Future Trading Commission. Now Gensler is about to get a lot more power. So this thing swells to unsustainable size and inevitably implodes, it collapses, and that collapse is used for a pretext to do what they've been planning to do all along. So it probably shouldn't shock you that right after FTX's collapse, every major bank in this country announced a new partnership with the New York Fed to establish a new digital currency. Oh, digital currency. The one they can regulate and control. Citigroup, Wells Fargo, MasterCard, HSBC, all working on a 12-week digital dollar pilot. The Fed describes this project as a regulated liability network. So what does this mean long term? If they have control of your money because it's digital, if they don't like what you say, they can turn it off and you're impoverished. This whole thing is a bigger scam even than it seems, and it was made possible by political sloganeering. And Sam Bankman-Fried, if nothing else, is not stupid, and he knows that well. As he put it in a message to a reporter the other day from his hideout in the Bahamas, the woke posturing is the most effective possible business boy. In other words, if you suspected all this was a scam, all the moral posturing, all the lectures you get about how they're great and you're bad, this was all a way to blind you to the fact that there was a massive ripoff going on, you might be on the right track. All three now have come together and are forcing the world today to its prophesied end. Carbon credit score will merge and fuse with the blockchain technology of cryptocurrency so as to control the global economy. You can validate and verify and authenticate every single transaction of every human being on the planet. You know where this is going, right? Global regulations coming for the carbon credits market. During the UN's COP or COP26 climate summit in Glasgow last year, 200 countries adopted Article 6 of the 2015 Paris Agreement. The main takeaway is that it will create, listen, a single global, single global carbon credits market that an upcoming UN agency will regulate. The bankruptcy of the FTX crypto exchange, which is unprecedented in size and scope, was orchestrated, pre-planned, and perfectly timed. On the heels of this crypto exchange crashing and collapsing, we're talking hundreds of billions with a B dollars. So now all of a sudden, the whole crypto world is shaken up. And now they're losing confidence in cryptocurrency, decentralized cryptocurrency, digital currency. Oh, I see what's going on here. This uh, Bankman uh, Free, this guy was uh, set up, funded, planted, and they used him in the creation of this exchange with the intent of crashing it right on time because once they crashed that which they had set up through this guy, this uh, puppet, if you will, um, now all of a sudden the whole crypto world's going, what are we gonna do? Oh, no worries, no need to fear. The New York Fed is here and we're gonna launch a pilot and we're gonna paint you into our crypto cr corner. We're going to force you into our centralized digital currency. Oh, it's, just per it's perfect timing. I mean, you, you couldn't time it any better. It's scripted. It's planned. It's timed. Frontline warriors, the battle is the Lord's. He commands his angels to guard you.
align with warrior angels for protection. As a precious child of your Creator, you have angels assigned to you. Psalm 91 is your ark of protection for these last days. Fortify yourself with Jesus, the living Word of God. We defend ourselves with Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against you will prosper. His word activates the angels to move on your behalf. You can speak these decrees in your own words, but playing this and verbally agreeing or repeating it as it plays is a powerful way to put God's word in the air. Playing it aloud is important because Satan cannot hear your thoughts. By doing this, you bombard Satan's impotent demonic mob with God's truth. This is giving Satan a powerful notice. After each decree, you can say, I agree in Jesus' name, or just, Amen. We know this, or something similar, is a must-do to have the full power of the Lord operating in our lives. Stand on his promises. God always keeps his word. This is an important key to releasing angels. Every decree that follows is based on the word of God. Speaking these and the precious promises God has given us will help you build your faith and hope. Doing so will loose warrior angels who Jesus has already sent to assist you. The recording of our guardian angel's message in the video playlist, Supernatural Angel Visitation, confirms the importance of doing this. Praying this makes you a frontline war eagle. Ask Father God to hide you from the enemy. This is critical. The greatest days in church history are not in our past. They are in our present and our future. Holy Spirit is now supervising a new movement of awesome revival. Angel armies are ascending and descending. We are under an open heaven. Angels are ministering fire fresh from heaven's altar. It's purging iniquity off of us. Power from heaven is flowing to us and through us. Holy Spirit is breathing life into our King's campaign. Holy Spirit is breathing life into miracles, healings, and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. A movement that moves is now moving. Holy Spirit is coming to us now with far more of the angels than he did on Pentecost in Acts 2. Angel armies are being commissioned to be present and minister to us and with us. Angel activity is increasing exponentially. Revival greater than Pentecost in Acts 2 is now flowing through us and to us. Greater power than has ever been seen in church history is now flowing to us and through us. There is now an alignment of heaven's angel army with the remnant warrior army and the war eagle army of the coming generation. They will now synergize together under the Holy Spirit supervision to demonstrate that the kingdom of God is present, energized, activated, and successful. Power for mighty deliverance be loosed. Power for kingdom exploits be loosed. Deep currents of Holy Spirit power that produce the largest harvest of souls in history be loosed. Angel network be loosed to help gather the harvest. New strategies of evangelism be loosed. Revelation and enlightenment be loosed. We loose the air force, H-E-I-R, the assisters of the heirs of Christ. We loose angel armies. We loose the troops of heaven to fight alongside of us. In Jesus' name we deploy them. Activate the campaign of King Jesus and Holy Spirit in this nation. Angels carrying and assisting the King's anointing be loosed. Angels assisting the Holy Spirit and fresh outpourings be loosed. God activity that, is, that only God's ability can create be loosed among us. Holy Spirit, execute God activity right here and right now. Release God happenings in the church. We will participate in God happenings. We will see more angel activity than demon activity. We forbid demon activity in Jesus' name. 
we have far more righteous angels on our side than the demons against us. The natural number is not the kingdom number. Lord of hosts, Lord of the angel armies is on our side. We will win. In Jesus' name, enemy resistance in the natural realms or spirit realms is being scattered and shattered. Angels are striking the enemies of the king. Angels are ambushing hell's forces as our praise ascends. Our praise decrees are producing victory that looks impossible. The kingdom of God is now being extended locally, regionally, and throughout the earth. Bold, passionate, energized, and authoritative angels are assisting us to do the works of Jesus. Angel armies are camped all around us because we respect the Lord and decree his word. In Jesus' name we loose them now. Work for us, assist us. Angels are circling to protect our borders. Angels are revolving around us to deliver and bring salvation in the spirit realms and natural realms. Angels are present time deliverers here now and to deliver us. Angels are circling to make ugly situations turn lovely. In Jesus' name, be loose to take hold of bad circumstances and events on life's journey and turn them around for our good. We loose angels to rescue, strip away bondage, remove obstacles that hinder, and protect us from hell's strategies. We loose angels to lead us to unbelievers who are receptive to Jesus. We loose angels to bring us messages in dreams. Dreams be loosed to provide guidance in Jesus' name. We loose angels to bring answers to prayers, just like Daniel and Revelation describe. Angels who organize around the prayers of the saints and help bring them to pass are working now in our lives. Angels who organize around our prayers for this region as the Holy Spirit supervises assist us in doing the work of the ministry. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to release angel armies to bring answers to our prayers. Release angels to tip the prayer bowls of heaven into the fire on your altar. We decree heaven's angel armies are released into the affairs of men as a result of our crying out to you, O God. We cry out, God, give us mercy, grant us loving kindness, hear our prayers. We invite in Jesus' name angels to come execute judgment upon the deep-rooted iniquity in our region and nation. Engage in combat against sin and perversion. Engage with us and fight doctrines of devils. Angels who go before us to open doors be loosed in Jesus' name. Angels who go ahead to prepare our way for success be loosed in Jesus' name. Angels who cut off enemy attacks be loosed in Jesus' name. Angels who arrange divine connections to people or events be loosed in Jesus' name. Angels who assist prophetic promises to come to pass be loosed in Jesus' name. Bring them to us. Accelerate them. Angels who bring messages from the Godhead be loosed in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, release the angels who bring enlightenment and revelation. Angels who bring us supernatural strength to finish our assignments be released in Jesus' name. Release the angels of strength. Strengthen us to overcome and reign with Jesus. Release in this region angels who attack Jezebels, Absaloms, and Ahabs. Loose them to free our assignments. Loose them to give us great victory. Loose them to protect us from property being stolen from us. Send the angels who strengthen your church and your people. We lose strength to stand and win. We are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We declare the kingdom of God grows and prevails. We decree the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. The Lord says, It is time for a new release of my Holy Spirit power. The king's anointing and authority will increase in unprecedented delegated proportions. The angel network is assisting the Holy Spirit in exalting heaven's king, and now the young and the old worship will participate in the greatest movement of my kingdom in history. The transgenerational outpouring prophesied by Joel will be loosed upon us now in Jesus' name. Anointing on all flesh be loosed to us and through us. Anointing for increased dreams and visions be released to us. Just look around this world right now and everything occurring and look at what your Bible says and you will see several things are true. The Bible is real. The Bible is alive. Jesus is real. 
Jesus is alive and Jesus is coming back very, very, very soon. This current world order, it is sinking and it is sinking fast just like the Titanic. You need to get on the lifeboat. That lifeboat is Jesus Christ and him alone. I'm not telling you to get religious. I'm telling you, you could be saved as you're watching this video. What do you have to do to be saved? Well, the gospel of your salvation is found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4. Believe. You're believing Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. The sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. If you're still confused, here's the bottom line. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all fall short of the glory of God. And our sin separates us from a holy, a just, and a perfect God. But God loves you so much that he would come down, he would be born of a virgin, he became flesh, he dwelt among us, and he was brutally tortured and crucified and shed his precious blood for you on that cross. Again, the sin debt that you could never pay on your own, Jesus Christ paid it in full with his blood on the cross so you could be reconciled back to him, forgiven of your sins, and be with him forever in heaven. That is love, my friends. That is love. The bottom line is this. Heaven and hell are very real literal places, and you will spend an eternity in one of those destinations. Hell's a real place. It's eternal torment. It's eternal separation from God. I don't want you to go there. Jesus does not want you to go there. But if you die without Jesus Christ, you will be separated from God for eternity in hell, and I am going to tell you the truth because I love you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the kingdom of heaven, and he's the only name that can save you. Put your faith in your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again. He resurrected on the third day as it is written in the scriptures. And do it now because tomorrow is not promised. And make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming and he's coming one day very, very, very soon. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life.